Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and in our last video concerning this wall-mounted uh, data rack, uh, we talked about the products, what it does, everything else. It's from Daymac. It's a nice-looking uh, data rack. It has a nice finish on it. It's well put together. It's welded in the right places. It's sturdy. It's heavy. It's secure. It's strong. It also locks. I like that. Um, but uh, I did forget to mention one thing. I do have the door off the front door. It's a glass door that goes on the front. And that is these rails here, obviously, that you attach your um, equipment to and all. These rails are adjustable. They go in and out. So that's really nice. I noticed that after I did the last video. You got a bolt here and a bolt here. You, you, you unbolt it. You slide it back on both sides. You put your uh, equipment in there, your patch panel, your switch, your router, whatever you need to put in there. You put it in there and you move it back as far as you like so you can do patching and have more room because right now you only have like uh, not even a, maybe it's an inch yeah it's probably a little more than an inch you need a little more room when you do your patching than just an inch um, and again uh, of course you know this is a little cabinet you can see through and uh, this is the door it comes off very easily has latches you know that you just lift up door comes off and it also has a lock so this is fully lockable uh, great application for what we do and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to demonstrate um, how to mount this onto a wall mount it securely safe uh, safety wise make sure it's up there it's not going to fall down uh, half you know uh, a month after you put it up and we're going to show you how to do it professionally now, I've seen a lot on the uh, internet, and people are attaching this type of equipment to drywall. You do not attach this type of equipment to drywall. And the reason why is it has weight in it that sticks way far out there, and that weight that's real far out is going to push down on it. You attach it to a drywall, looks great until you put the equipment in, and it's going to go hitting the ground. Or you're going to get the equipment in, a week later, somebody's going to walk by, put something on top, or push it, or hit it it's going to come right off the wall. You don't want that to happen. It can hurt someone, damage the equipment, okay? So what, I, what I've done now is I've just taken a piece of drywall, okay? Now stay with me, okay? Because we are going to mount it on a wall that has drywall, but I'm going to show you how to do it right. So this is a piece of drywall. And so people that don't know what this drywall looks like or what it consists of is right in here is, a, um, is plaster um, and it's covered with paper, paper on the on one side, paper on the other. Uh, so there's not much to it. Looks great. Its purpose is to look good. Its purpose is not to support, you know, 50, 100, 200 pounds worth of equipment using drywall screws or even bolts. Putting bolts through this thing, it's still going to rip out. Let me demonstrate that. Drywall saw a uh, screw. I'm just going to put a hole in it. Okay, looks great. You can hang a picture on that maybe, you know, just take it out a little bit. It'll hold a picture. It'll hold, uh, you know, cup holders or something like that. But it's not going to hold a piece of equipment like this over here. Um, and in fact, if you just put a little bit of pressure on it, it just comes right out. You see? Did you see that cameraman? Did you get it? Just goes right in and comes right out. Because this stuff... Once it's, once it's uh, moved around a little bit, it's just like chalk. If you remember the old chalkboards, it just turns into dust. It doesn't really um, hold anything. But it, it's not designed to hold equipment. It's designed just to be on the wall, you know, to put, you know, facing on it, to make it look nice, to be able to paint it. That's all it's designed to do, and it does a great job at that. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a piece of wood. Okay, now this is a demonstration. We're just putting it up on a wall. As soon as we're done with the video, I'm going to take it off the wall. But normally you want to use a 5 8 inch piece of wood. Nah, this will work. And it'll work for the demonstration. But this is just a piece of plywood. Got this at Lowe's. You can get a Home Depot, lumber yard, whatever you want. It's just a normal piece of wood. And uh, 4 by 4 is usually the smallest, but for uh, uh, our work today, we're just going to use this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this up on the wall. And we're going to mount this first on the wall okay and the reason we're going to mount it on the wall is if you look we we can actually see on this unfinished wall uh, and of course there's stud finders but you can actually see the studs 
here that are holding up the drywall. And so we're going to attach to the studs on this. Two studs. This is what's going to be our support. So when we bolt that uh, data uh, cabinet to it, it's going to be actually attached to the studs, not to the drywall. Now, of course, it's going to go through the drywall to attach to the studs, but it's going to attach to the studs, and then the, the data cabinet is going to attach to the drywall. There's another advantage, too. The back of the data cabinet's open. Nice thing about that being open is now you can attach things to this through the data cabinet, and it can be in a secure environment and it's securely attached to the wall. It's not going to fall off. So let's do it. Patrick, my helper today. Patrick and I have known each other for 25 years and worked together. Now, we normally would have a level to level this, but you know, we're just going to put it up on the wall. And Patrick and I, as I said before, work together now for 25 years, and this is my job. It's to hold the screws for Patrick, right? Is that correct? <laughs> Today. Today. Did you hear how nice and strong that was? Now again, we'd normally you'd put a level up here. You get a level, you do it right, okay? But today we're gonna do a demo and it's gonna come down as soon as we're done. Oops. Okay. It's going right into those studs in the wall. It's gonna be firmly attached. These drills, by the way, are great these days. That noise you hear, that's the, uh, the hammer portion of the, of the drill really hammering it in. That is not going to come off. Now, you notice the screws are right where, right where the studs are. I mean, you can put screws anywhere else you want. That's fine. But they're going to do nothing unless they're attached to the studs. A little drywall trick, though. Which, show me the drywall trick. If you attach something to the drywall and you offset your screws, you can drive them down, drive them up. But in reality, this is not how you would normally attach it. And sometimes what I do is I just put it through the drywall on one corner, like you're doing there before you split it. And then I can pull up the other end, level it, and then I use the, uh, the drills. Because they're offset. Well, they're gonna hold a little bit, but not, nothing down. like going right, right to a uh, stud. Lift it up. Okay. You want to give me your marker and I'll mark it? Yep. Okay, don't move it now. Okay, that's good enough. Go ahead. Leave that one in. Right there. what you want to put a couple of those drywall screws to hold it yep. now what we're going to use is we're going to use a drywall 
screws going through the wood to hold it in place till he has a chance. Okay. Uh, I hope you can turn it off because this is so crooked. It's crazy. Yeah, I know it's crooked. There you go. Now we got it straight. Oh, okay. Even that looks like it's done. Straight with the top. How's that? Right there. Okay. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we put one screw in there to hold it in place. Now we're going to put a couple other drywall screws that aren't going to stay there. It's just to hold it in place. And so I don't have to hang out here. Okay. Now we can't leave it like this. It's really not attached yet. It's just being held in place. You would want to make sure it's level. As you can see, it's a real uh, uh, tight uh, fit there with the lag bolt right into the uh, right into the wood backboard. Um, and uh, remember, if you're going to mount this, just don't show up with the with the data rack. You got to make sure that you have the right tools. Of which, yeah, we could have better tools. My tools are spread out through uh, uh, three sites right now, and I don't have all the right tools, but I had enough just to show you. So ratchet. At the proper uh, uh, socket, maybe an extension, go with the ratchet. On top of that, uh, these bolts do not come with the, uh, the data rack, so you got to go to Lowe's or Home Depot or a hardware store and get the proper bolts uh, to mount it. Now, we're, we mounted this to a drywall. You can also do this on a cement wall. And if you're going to do a cement wall, a concrete wall, uh, you don't need a wood back, uh, uh, backboard. I'd still recommend it, but you don't need it. Uh, you can mount this directly to uh, concrete. It's going to stay. But remember, you're going to need mollies. You're going to need a hammer jack. And you're going to need the proper attachments, uh, uh, depending on the wall that you're attaching it to. So uh, in this case, drywall, you're going to see that. In most cases, you're going to see that in commercial applications. And this is how you attach it to a drywall. Remember, 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 you cannot attach this directly to a drywall. If, it, if you do, it's going to fall right off the, the drywall. So um, eventually it will, even if it doesn't the day of install. So do it right. If you're going to use drywall, use a piece of uh, wood behind it. Um, but one of the nice things you got here is you got some area you can mount. And uh, you can mount different things here that don't have a 19 inch. Uh, uh, rack mountable uh, space, but sometimes you know you can you can mount things on here. You can mount you know uh, I don't know firewall. Sometimes firewalls are pretty small. Sometimes power supplies can be bolted here. Things like that. Now you have some knockouts. You have big round knockouts on the bottom, and some small round knockouts, and you also have big ones at the top. Uh, the smaller ones you can bring in your 110 circuit, your flex. You can put an outlet right here on the wall, 110 outlet. You can, uh, as I said, a power strip can go here. Um, but you also have knockouts where you can bring your cable in from, from the uh, building. You can bring it right down the wall into here. Okay, the, the other nice thing about this little area here is you can cut a big hole here. Uh, and you can run your cables behind the wall and protect them from damage from equipment, from sabotage from some people, things like that. You know, one of the things you learn in cybersecurity as you do cybersecurity training is you make sure that your front door to your uh, uh, data room is locked and that people don't have the key. So the people who um, had a labor dispute, and I don't even remember what the dispute's about, I didn't get involved in those things, but the people who had the labor dispute were able to go walk right into the data room with no one looking, shut the door behind them, get some wire cutters, and cut. Well, it was a big system, so I imagine it was probably about 100 cables, maybe 200. It was big for that area anyway, for that, that office. And so we had to recable the whole building. Um, and 
when we recabled the whole building. We made sure everything was in lockable cabinets, that the cabinets were bolted to the wall, and that we brought the cable in from the back, and we put a new lock on uh, the door uh, to the data room, and only uh, certain people had the key and never had that problem again. So this gives you a lot of flexibility here, this little panel here. Um, you know, a lot of things you can do. Again, 110 uh, to the cabinet. If you're going to use 110 in the cabinet, make sure you ground it. Um, you got 110 in the cabinet, you can bring your, your uh, low voltage cable in from the top and your power in from the bottom, whatever you want to do. Everything can be attached here. Now when you're all done with all this, you're all done with bringing in all your cable and everything else and it all looks nice and neat and you're ready to start uh, doing your punch down of your patch panel and you're ready to uh, put in your um, routers and your switches and the other equipment. Maybe you're using this for video, things like that. You just close it and and then you lock it. You can see the latch, how it's locked. It's really strong. You know, I'm leaning. I don't want to put my uh, overly heavy body on this, but I, I'm pretty sure if I pushed it, I could probably sit on top of it. It's, it's pretty strong. Now you hook up all your equipment. Now you, you dress in all your cables. Now you do all your punch down and stuff like that up here and you make sure these are adjusted to the size you want. Uh, it's nice, it's secure. And again, remember, normally these aren't hung at this level. They're normally hung high, usually around 5'5". Five five. And so those individuals that are taller than 5'5", five five run into this all the time, right? Or you can. And it's nice that it's rounded, you know? So you're not gonna punch a hole in your head. Uh, you're not going to cause an injury and blood all over the place and hate and discontent. So that really makes it nice. And it, again, it has a really nice finish to a professional baked on, I think it's baked on finish. Um, it just does a really good job. Let me get the, the front door and put it on. Uh, they're really uh, on spring loaded and you can just lock them in the open position. And what I do is, is lock it, slide it up there, slide the bottom one in there. Make sure it connects, it's connected. Close it. Now, it's locked from prying hands, curious people, things like that. This is good in, in schools with kids because uh, kids like to fool with things. Adults like to fool with things, to be honest with you. What's nice too, as I said in the last video, is you got a little bit of smoke glass here so you can see the lights going on and off. And I don't know how many times, um, you know, I got, in a phone, I got a phone call, oh, everything's down, it's not working, get out of here, fix it. And I said, well, do you have power? Well, how do I check? How do I check power? Sometimes I tell them to take a uh, lamp, um, like a desk lamp, and just plug it into the outlet to see if the outlet has power. But in this case, you could actually see the lights on the can actually see the lights on the uh, router and switch and everything else. You can see if they're flashing. If everything's dark in here, of course that person can tell you on the phone. Now I don't see any lights, so then you know you have a power issue. Uh, but if you see lights and they still, you know, it just helps you in troubleshooting. Okay. And so this is a really nice thing. It's it's sturdy. It's strong. You can put your uh, your equipment in there, and I, I think its application would be schools. I think another application is going to be uh, retail stores, things like that. You don't want employees messing around with it. It's going to be small areas where your data guy is not sitting at a desk 10 feet away. So it's going to be areas um, you know, that can handle a couple switches, a couple routers, um, a backup power supply, uh, your uh, uh, closed circuit TV recorder, your DVR things like that. This has a great application for something like that. You saw how you mount it. It's not that hard. Do it right. If we would have done this just on the drywall, if I really put a lot of weight on this, it would have fell right to the ground. It would have ripped out. So do it right. Don't do it to drywall. Do it to a backboard or bolt it to a, uh, to a concrete wall. Uh, thank you for watching the videos. Uh, I'm really honored by the fact that people watch these videos. I appreciate it. And I thank you for ordering from uh, cablesupply.com. And again, this is Jim Gibson from CableSupply.com. Thank you. 
Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet.